The preseason is officially over for the LA Clippers. And Luke Kennard and Norman Powell were as impressive as it gets in the final game against the Denver Nuggets in Ontario. The Clippers do fall short, but we're going to talk about all of that and how great they looked coming up on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day. Your team every day. I'm your host heading into my 18th season as a Clipper fan, Darian Viziri. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. And of course, if you're a Clipper fan or an LA sports fan or a fan of basketball in general, go follow my YouTube channel or subscribe to it, Dime Dropper. I'm also big into NBA history and make content on that there. But for today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the final preseason game the Clippers played against the Denver Nuggets in Ontario, home of the Agua Caliente Clippers G League affiliate. And despite the fact that there there was no Kawhi Leonard in this game for load management reasons, there was no Jamal Murray, probably for the same thing. There were still plenty of takeaways from the game and good and bad signs, but we're going to focus mostly on the good signs given that it's preseason. And one of those great signs, or two of those great signs, with well, the performances of Luke Kennard and Norman Powell, who was back after a one-game absence uh, for a little, I believe it was a rib injury for Norman Powell. And we still saw Paul George, even though we didn't see Kawhi Leonard. So it's going to be good to get into all of that, including Marcus Morris and just some things we saw, including why I think the Denver Nuggets could be a difficult matchup for the Clippers in the regular season and in the playoffs just going forward. But let's just talk about it. The Clippers, by the way, I know the scores – don't really matter as much in preseason, but the score was 126 to 115 in favor of the Denver Nuggets. They outscored the Clippers 26 to 15. It was actually 100 to 100 going into the fourth quarter. And at that point, it was kind of third stringers and young players. So the Denver Nuggets did get the better of the Clippers young players in that one. But let's talk about the main stuff we saw. And that was the starting lineup for both teams. For the Clippers, they went with a smaller starting lineup. Reggie Jackson started instead of John Wall. Now, I was a little curious about that because John has played so well, and I figured that Ty Lue would start John going forward, and he probably, in my opinion, I said it very adamantly in the last episode that I think John Wall is going to start, but after the game, Ty Lue did say he doesn't know. He thought it was clear-cut, but he doesn't know who's going to start. I think that means that he was more pro Reggie to start this season or the begin the preseason. And now John Wall's made the job so tough for him because John Wall's looked a lot better than Reggie. And in this game, he looked better again. Reggie was 0 for 1 and only played 12 minutes. And John Wall only played 10 minutes, but he had 8 points, 4 assists, and 3 rebounds, and 3 or 4 from the field. And two of those were contested mid-range jumpers. So that's not usually what you see from John Wall. But again, that's just more, more good things to see. Anyway, though, as far as the main characters that I mentioned in the beginning, Luke Kennard, I'm convinced that that guy's just not going to miss for the rest of the season. Like, it's insane. This guy is making every single shot. He missed one, two shots in preseason. In the whole of preseason, he missed two shots. He was five for six in the game against the Nuggets, one for two from deep, 11 points. And it, were, it wasn't just spot up threes. As I said, it was only one three. When guys were running him off the line, he did such a good job of taking a couple dribbles in and stepping into the mid-range and knocking that down. And even, again, guys are really trying to run him off the line, really take away his jump shot. So when he's on the drive, he gets that little step back and creates separation, especially going to his right that he really likes. And he had a couple of those, or at least one of those. And it's just an amazing sign. And after the game, beat writers were asking Ty Lu, does it make it your job tougher that Luke Kennard's playing so well? And, and Ty said very clearly, no, he's playing. He's playing. So that goes to show me after what I said all, you know, so far on these podcasts, I said that Luke Kennard was going to be the the odd man out when everyone's healthy. But the way he's playing is just no way that can happen. There's no way. He offers way too much incredible shooting. And also, as I've mentioned on numerous occasions, his movement without the ball is so great. And 
he just gives you a different look. Like sometimes you don't want to have a bunch of creators out there. You like to have guys that are comfortable getting the ball for two seconds and their role is to make a quick decision in two seconds, whether it is to catch and shoot or just keep moving the ball. And Nico Batum kind of falls into that category as well. He doesn't need the ball. He's not an initiator creator. He's more of a play finisher and just he's involved in plays. So Luke Kennard has looked as great as any Clipper in this preseason. I would be ecstatic if I was a Clipper fan going into this season in, in regards to him because he just looks lights out like he's on course to lead the league in three-point percentage again. That's how great he looks. And then Norman Powell. You know, we didn't see these guys in the – actually, no, we did see them in the second half. It was Paul George and Reggie Jackson that we didn't see in the second half and Marcus Morris as well and Zoo, if I recall correctly. But Norman Powell was just out of this world good. And we wanted to see that because, again, it's funny. Last episode I said maybe Norman Powell's the odd man out. If John Wall is playing so well and Kennard is playing so well, but the guy is so good. Like It's like every one of these Clipper players just keeps reminding us why the Clippers are so deep. And Norman Powell was awesome. He made every single shot you can think of, you know, on the drive to the right, going to the basket, stopping on the dime for a mid-range, hitting a catch-and-shoot three. There was even one play where he stopped and popped for a mid-range, missed, and then got his own rebound and put it up and in before he even came down to the ground. So very impressive from Norman Powell. He had an incredible 34 points on 11 of 14 shooting and four for six from three. And one thing I really like, he got to the line eight times and he made all eight of his free throws. So that's great. And you love to see that rim pressure because the Clippers were really lacking it and kind of do lack it and have lacked it. And that's why they went out and got John Wall. Paul George, I was not very happy with what I saw from him in this game. And I know it's preseason. It's not that big of a deal. But it's just he obviously when John Wall's not starting and Kawhi Leonard's not playing, he's going to handle the ball a lot. And that's what I want. I want Paul George to still handle the ball a lot because I think he's made significant strides as a playmaker and initiator and pick and roll. But I still want him to be a little bit more careful with the ball. I think at times Paul can get careless with the ball and throw some kind of loosey-goosey passes and risky passes. And he turned the ball over a couple times in this one. One of them was on a behind-the-back that hit Zubats' foot, or it may have hit his own foot. It hit someone's foot, and it was a turnover. And there was another one where he had uh, that no look to the to the left corner, and Aaron Gordon read it very well, and he got it got picked off. But one thing, besides the turnovers, I mean, he committed three in the game, but the main thing about Paul George that I wasn't a huge fan of in this game was he settled again a lot. I mean, I, he did start out the game with a couple of mid-ranges instead of threes. They didn't go in. And it's just his shot diet right now is very difficult. They're all contested shots. But they're not open threes. And I'm just a little concerned that Paul won't be able to get to the basket the same way, you know, the same way we're used to and the same way the Clippers are going to probably need from him in order to get to the level that they want to get to. And that's the championship level. Because John Wall right now and Norman Powell look like the two guys that can get to the basket the easiest for the Clippers. John Wall in particular seems to be getting two feet in the paint easier than anybody. But I really still want Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, hopefully, to get shots that aren't so difficult all the time. And obviously, that's why John Wall is there to help them. But I'm even talking about on the ball in isolation. Because you know teams are going to switch everything at times. And Kawhi and Paul George are going to have to create. And just taking contested mid-ranges is, is, is not great. I still like it because it's a science for guys that master it, but I still want some rim pressure. And I still think they should be able to get to the basket, at least in Paul's case. But again, it's preseason. Don't want to draw too many conclusions. Everybody's a little rusty. Everybody's getting their legs back underneath them. Paul George was one for six from the field, 0 for three from deep. He did have six rebounds and four assists, five steals as well. So I think he had active hands in the passing lanes, even though on ball, his defense was not that great in my opinion. Aaron Gordon bullied him around the rim three times for buckets. So can do without that in the regular season. Two points for Paul and three turnovers. And speaking of turnovers, that was the main reason why the Clippers lost the game. I'm going to be talking about why they just could not stick with the Nuggets, really, even from the first quarter onwards, and why the Nuggets could be a real, real problem for the Clippers going forward. I'm going to be talking about that coming up. 
This season's NBA MVP odds. Luka Doncic leads the pack with a plus 450. Joel Embiid right behind with plus 600. He's been very close to winning MVP the last two years, and it has kind of slipped out of his fingers. And if you want to make your bets and place them, you got to go to Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your basketball betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. Doesn't matter what sport it is. It could be MLB, the playoffs are underway. It could also be the NFL, which the season's in full bloom. And of course, the World Cup is coming up very soon. And you want to place your bets on that, as well as the NBA season, which is right on its eve. It's the, remember, to, remember to make sure. To head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. Okay, so for the Clippers, they lost this game, and a big reason why was turning the ball over. Now, I got to give the Denver Nuggets credit. They played pretty well, at least, you know, in the minutes that I mean, they just played pretty well in general, top to bottom. But no Jamal Murray. And they still get such good looks. And that's because of the two-time MVP, the reigning MVP, Nikola Jokic. And Nikola Jokic, as many Clipper fans know, has given us a lot of problems. Going back from the bubble, you can even go back to regular season games when DeAndre Jordan was the Clippers' starting center. He would give the Clippers problems. But one thing I really enjoy about the Nuggets' offense as a neutral fan is when Jokic catches the ball in the post, whether it's high post or low post right around the block, they have guys moving without the ball, cutters, guys setting back screens. So you have to stay attached and focused as players guarding the other four guys on the court. And the thing about it is, Jokic, the second somebody's open, he finds him perfectly. I mean, he's such an uncanny ability to pass the ball at his, at his size and position. you got to stay focused and alert on those cutters. The second you take your eye off of them, you turn your head, Boom, you could be done. And Contavious Caldwell Pope is going to be such a such a great addition to this Nuggets team. He's a solid defender. He can hit threes. He's a good slasher. You saw that with the Lakers. And in this game, you can just see it already. You know, four for eight from the field for KCP, two for six from deep, 14 points, a lot of great cuts, and Jokic just finding him beautifully on those. And, of course, Bruce Brown coming over from the Brooklyn Nets. He was really solid as well. Nine points on three or four shooting. And Aaron Gordon played really well both ends of the floor. 12 points and five boards, five for 10 from the field. And we saw the return of Michael Porter Jr. as well. And his shots were just so tough. I mean, all kinds of threes and jumpers. He was three for three from deep, four for six from the field. And not many of them were open. I mean, he had some contested fallaways. And he just has that size and height where he can get off any kind of shot. And it's, it's almost impossible to block. So you just kind of hope, gotta, kinda hope that he misses. And he had a good game, 12 points. And it's good. If you're a Nuggets fan, it's so good to see him back. He even had some decent defensive moments as well. But the Clippers, I thought, were struggling with that, with the Jokic getting the ball in the post. And I like when the Clippers double teamed him at times. That's why he only shot two shots, along with the fact that he had four fouls in the first half. But I like the double team, you know, because Zubats can't, nobody can guard Jokic one on one. So even if the Clippers have a switch and a small ball unit, Double team him, get the ball out of his hands, make him make a tough pass, and make the other guys knock down open shots. Obviously, when Jamal Murray comes back, that becomes a little bit more difficult, but just getting the ball out of the superstar player's hands is never a terrible thing. Nikola Jokic had seven assists, three rebounds, but he was 0 for 2, so the Clippers actually did a decent job on him. But, of course, it's preseason, so you can't look at it too seriously. But they just got to keep their heads on a swivel, and at times the Clippers were getting lost off the ball. It's just a lot of movement. When Jokic catches the ball, and naturally, as a defender off the ball, when Jokic catches the ball, you got all eyes on him getting ready to help. But Jokic makes such great passes, so you really got to be alert at all times. As far as the main reason the Clippers lost, I don't even think it was the defense. Because, I mean, you look at the box score, 126 points allowed to the Nuggets, 37 in the first quarter, 37 in the second quarter. They had 74 at half, which is way too much. But you also got to look at it. No Kawhi. The Clippers couldn't in institute all the small ball lineups that they wanted to, to use and the switch everything lineups they wanted to use. They did try to switch everything, but there were much smaller lineups. There were a couple times where Ty Lue had a three-guard set out there with Norman, John Wall, and Luke Kennard. And that's just not going to be something I don't think we see much in the regular season. But if Kawhi does load and manage, you may see that 
in games that he doesn't play. And I just think that's a little small. I'm not a fan of even having two guards that are 6'4 or under in the starting lineup or in the lineup. But in bench units, I'm okay with it. But three? Mm-mm. Too small in my opinion. But the main reason the Clippers lost was turnovers. Very loosey-goosey with the ball. 20 turnovers as a team and just passes that just could have been avoided. You had four from – I'm sorry, three from Paul George – one from Reggie, one from Zoo, one from Norman Powell, two from Nico Batum, three from Jason Preston, two from Xavier Moon, two from Brandon Boston. But a lot of those guys are bench players and third stringers, so that's not a big deal. But the guys that were turning the ball over in the first half, it just seemed a little too frequent, just kind of careless passes, just a little bit of a lack of urgency. And Ty Lu, again, it's it's okay, it's preseason, but Ty Lu said that's not the way we want to play. We can't play like that. It just our attention to detail, our focus wasn't strong. And he's right. I just think that at, at times the Clippers, especially with the switch everything scheme, it doesn't make you work as much on defense. It, it's the goal is to save your guys' energy because everybody can guard somebody. So on every screen, you don't have to fight through it. You can just switch your guy onto them and then make them work more offensively. But you can't get too comfortable with that scheme, meaning that you can't just be so reliant on either help defense or that someone's going to switch that you're not locked in defensively on your assignment or you're not – staying attached the second you switch you know there is a half a second where when someone switches they're a little open and if if somebody can get the ball there and you're not hustling to try to stay attached and lock and trail then you could be behind the play and as far as the clipper offense one thing you notice when they play the denver nuggets is the nuggets don't really blitz or drop Jokic as much they play a hedge recover scheme which you saw in the bubble a lot when they played us and that's Jokic comes up and doesn't fully blitz. He comes up just enough where he can take away the immediate shot coming off a screen, but also puts his hands up so that his roller, which is usually obviously Zoo, does not is not able to get the ball. And obviously somebody from the corner will come rotate on a Zoo just in case they get the ball to him. And by the time that pass is made to the corner, they can get back out and recover. And I think the Clippers are doing a pretty decent job of taking advantage of those short roll situations or finding instances where – They swung the ball and get open looks. And I think Norman Powell and Luke Kennard benefited off that a good amount. But still, some solid defense on the Denver Nuggets at times. And it's just going to be interesting to see the Clippers combat that scheme as the season continues, or as the season begins, I should say. And I think the turnovers really put the Clippers in a hole. They tied the game at 100. But the, the younger guys in the fourth quarter, I mean, they really, really did well. And for the Nuggets, I mean, Peyton Watson was very impressive. 16 minutes, he was three for nine, but... I liked what he was doing. You know, he showed some athleticism on defense. A couple of them showed athleticism. Jack White from Duke. Um, Conchar had a beautiful turnaround over Luke Kennard from the mid-range area. I did not know he had that in his bag. And, yeah, I thought they were energetic, and they were attacking the basket. I think that's what really stuck out to me with Denver is a lot more of their shots were around the basket, whereas the Clippers shot five more threes. They shot 39% from three, but the Nuggets, I just felt, were getting easier looks. And part of that is because, at least in the first half, When Nikola Jokic is setting a screen, you really got to account for him on the roll. And sometimes the ball handler would be freed up with a lane to the basket, and it forces someone else to help because they don't want to help off a Jokic, and that will leave a shooter open. So it's very tough when you don't have that switch-everything personnel. And the Clippers do have that switch-everything personnel, but Jokic is a guy that can exploit that switch-everything personnel because he has the ability to post guys up and take advantage of wings. You know, there are some guys in this league that don't, don't do a great job of posting up wings but Jokic is a true, great back-to-basket seven-footer and can dominate those, those players. So, you know, you saw a couple times very interesting actions in the second half. I'm sorry, second quarter where they'd run a little – the Nuggets would run a little dribble handoff where Jokic has the ball, hands it off, sets a screen immediately. And usually the guy that's guarding Jokic would come hedge or show on the guy coming off the handoff. But because Jokic is Jokic – Zoo is so tempted to stay attached. That forces another player guarding one of the other three guys in the court to come help. And as I just said, freeze guys up. So it's a dilemma guarding the Nuggets for sure. And when Jamal Murray comes back, that action is going to be even harder to defend. But of course, the Clippers still have Kawhi Leonard coming back. And there knows there's no guarantee the Clippers are going to play Denver in the playoffs. But that is a, a team that I wouldn't be super, super confident against. I'm not saying the Clippers shouldn't beat them. They should beat everybody. But Denver is a problem. But now to end it off, coming up, I'm going to be talking about the others. Marcus Morris's, the Nico Batum, the Robert Covington. How do the young kids look? Some final takeaways to take. 
as we head into the regular season, I'm so excited that the next game I'm talking about is going to be one that counts when we're gonna, where we're going to see the starters play in the second half and in the fourth quarter. Going to be talking about the final takeaways from the Nuggets game coming up. So let's just go through the line of Clipper players and I'll talk about their performances. Marcus Morris Sr. again looked fantastic. I mean, I am so excited about what how he looks right now. He was hitting all kinds of shots that he hits. He's three for three from deep, four for seven from the field. There was one three, just he caught it in stride on the run in transition off the catch, put it up right away, beautiful. And again, really liking what I'm seeing from Senior. 13 points for him in 16 minutes. He's had a great preseason and can't wait for opening night, and especially against the Lakers. I mean, he tends to play amazing against them. And then if it's a Zubats, I think he had his good and bad moments. Obviously, Jokic is a tough matchup for him, for anybody. He had a really nice dunk on a roll. I think it was John Wall that made a nice bounce pass for him. And there was another one where Jason Preston had a nice bounce pass to him uh, where he finished. And then there was an occasional moment where he had a jump hook that didn't look too good around the rim. But overall, I still like what I'm seeing from Zoo. I think he's going to have a good season. He had nine points and three rebounds, three of five from the field. There was one play where he came up a little too high on drop coverage and uh, one of the guards, forget exactly who, got the step on him and finished with an and one. And speaking of somebody, a guard who was getting the step on guys a lot, Ish Smith. Clippers are making him look like Iverson out there. He was playing amazing on his, I think he set the record now for most teams of any player in the history of the NBA, 13 teams. He had 15 points and eight assists to go along with four rebounds on seven for 11 shooting. He had 15 points and was a plus 17 in his 23 minutes. So Ish Smith clearly looks like he's going to be a good replacement for Monty Morris. But man, Clippers can't let him go off like that in the regular season. And then Reggie Jackson, I talked about briefly, 0 for 1, did not show much. Nico Batum, 17 minutes, 1 for 4, 3 points. Wasn't his best game. It was 1 for 3 from deep. And he was a little careless with the ball, but he had a nice block. He had two of them in the game. Robert Covington, only saw 9 minutes of him. 3 points, 1 for 2 from the field. A little quieter than normal. But Musa Diabate, I would, I would be disappointed if I failed to mention him. Uh, another solid stint for him in the game. 15 minutes, 4 for 8 from the field. 8 points, 5 boards. He really moves his feet so well on defense. But the main takeaway, oh my goodness, he postered Jack White. I'm almost positive it was Jack White. Oh my goodness. That was filthy. If you haven't seen that already, please go check it out. My God. And as for his counterpart, or should I say his partner in crime or the guy competing against him for minutes, potential minutes, Moses Brown wasn't liking what I was saying. I think with that episode I had with Asher talking about Moses Brown, it's just a little behind with the, you know, the NBA level of what is needed. It seems true. I mean, he seems a little slower, stiffer, just not as mobile as most of these bigs or Musa Diabate, especially. And it doesn't seem like he's super, super skilled and coordinated offensively to garner those minutes for a team of this caliber. So you're just not going to see Moses Brown playing much in the regular season, I bet. Musa Diabate clearly showed in this preseason if there's one thing to take away, if the, if Zubats is ever out, the Clippers ever need a backup big in there, he is the guy. John Wall, again, awesome. Just getting to the basket relentlessly. Eight points, four assists, three boards. Three for four, putting constant rim pressure. Another time where he got in transition and uh, created an open three on a hockey assist. Just love what John's given us so far. And he's also looked more intense on defense than a lot of the starters. So John Wall should absolutely start against the Lakers on opening night. And then Terrence Mann, I don't think he was great. He had a, a one or two nice defensive moments that you know he's going to have. But the main challenge for Terrence is going to be getting better at putting the ball in the basket. Simple as that. He had four points. He started off by missing a, a contested layup, which he usually makes that he got on a pass, not a drive to the basket. But when Terrence Mann, who has shown more potential in terms of handling the ball and pick and roll, he'll obviously be doing it less this season than you saw in the second half of last season with Paul George out and obviously not when Norman Powell went down. But the main thing with Terrence is teams are going to play drop coverage on him all day long and force him to hit that mid-range. And we've seen him hit it, but he's got to continue to get better at it and knock that down to make defenses pay because then defenses will collapse. And he is a good passer, a very good passer. But one for seven from him, just not hitting his shots. And then Amir Coffey, one for four when he came in. Brandon Boston, one for five. I think you got to give credit to the Nuggets defense. I think their length was really impressive and made life tough for the Clipper young, gun, young guns. 
But one of the young guns who I thought had a really, really solid game, the best I've seen from him thus far, Jason Preston. I thought Jason Preston showed more conviction in terms of looking for his shot. There was one play where he came up a screen. He looked like he was trying to get to the basket. I don't remember if it was Jokic. I think it was Jokic that stepped up, and he had a nice pass, bounce pass to Ivici Zubats. I really like that. And then he also knocked down a shot himself, two points, one for four, but some really nice passes made by him. I liked what I saw. He's really got great court vision. But again, Jason Preston, he won't be getting many minutes in the regular season. But I did like what I saw from him in the preseason as it went on. I think when he looks to score more, things are going to open up for him. I think that's the case for any player, though, really. But yeah, let's see if there's any last things to take away. Overall, the Clippers shot 48% from the field and 39% from three. It was the turnovers and the defense that really cost them in this game. But of course, results, I wouldn't focus too much on them in the preseason. It started at the end of the first quarter, really the sloppiness for the Clippers. And that's when it was a three-point game, 28 to 25. And then all of a sudden, it was an eight-point game at the end of the first quarter. So taking care of the ball in closing quarters. It's very important for NBA teams and especially for the Clippers. And by the way, you saw Zubats kind of play more of a normal rotation in that first half that you were used to him playing last season. I think because of Kawhi's absence, uh, you didn't see Ty employ those switch everything kind of schemes. You, uh, and also probably because of Jokic as well. Zubats stayed until the three-minute mark, which is normal for him. John Wall, by the way, came in at the five-minute mark for Reggie Jackson. So no, uh, not much else, though, that I can think of. Make sure to comment, though, on the YouTube channel. What's your final decision on the Wall versus Reggie starting predicament? Are you team John or are you team Reggie? I want you to tell me that in the comment. It's the fastest way to grow the channel. We're on our way to 900 subscribers. We just passed San Antonio. So thank you guys. We are now 29th out of 30 in the locked on NBA subscriber count. Let's continue to climb up the ranks. Let's get to 28. And by doing that, we need to get to 900 first. So make sure you do that. Clippers also getting killed in transition. They need to do a better job of getting back and hustling back, especially when they turn the ball over. But overall, really encouraging signs. Norman Powell with 34 points. Luke Kennard has missed two shots in the entire pre uh, preseason. Unbelievable. And yeah, I just can't wait for the season to start because it's just going to be a fun one. Clipper Nation, don't look too far into the results of these last two preseason games. It's not my first rodeo. I've done this before. Preseason's all about just seeing how players look and potential lineup combinations. And the Clippers definitely got what we needed out of that to see what worked. And not what worked, but more who looks good and what can work. And Ty Lue, trust him. He's going to get the job done. He'll have the guys motivated. It's the Lakers. You'll know they'll be motivated opening night. But thank you guys for joining me. Make sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Dime Dropper Pod. And of course, to subscribe to my YouTube channel for an even closer look at the Clippers and basketball and my opinions on it at my YouTube channel, Dime Dropper. Help me get to 4K. Thanks, guys. And you know the age-old proverb, go Clippers. Back tomorrow. And of course, opening night is on the horizon.